Good morning, dear colleagues, friends, participants of the 10th Jubilee Gaidar Forum. Today we have a session which is called Modernizing the Russian Energy Sector, a new global energy framework. The subject matter, although year 2018, throughout the year, experts, energy community discussed the subject of modernizing in the energy sector in the wide sense of the word. And while well, despite all those uh, discussions, we continue those discussions into the year, the new year. Well, there was a lot of debate in this country about uh, how m much funding do we need uh, to move to new types of generation. There is a heated debate, no documents produced out of the debate so far. Therefore, the subject, the title of this session continues to be a topical one, and we have a very distinguished set of presenters here that would help us see the general picture of what is happening in the power sector, energy sector right now, and what are the uh, prospects for the development in Russia. Also, there will be some reports on the European uh, Union, in particular uh, Germany and France. Today, the uh, measures that uh, are being implemented in this whole framework of modernizing the energy sector, it's modernizing the thermal power plants, building new power generation facilities in the Far East. There's also a new program to support the renewable sources of energy and uh, digitalization of the networks and marketing systems. Also within this framework, there's also a, a topic of locali localizing the production of equipment previously applied to renewables only. Now it's a thermal power generation as well. And all of that ends up with the question, who is going to pay for all those new programs, the trillion of rubles that would be required uh, to uh, implement all those programs. Today, we have nine speakers, and we have been given an hour and a half for our deliberations. So please uh, complete your presentations in 10 minutes for as long as you can do that, so that we have time for questions and answers. We decided to structure the sections as follows. First, we have several reports devoted to the development and modernization of the energy sector in Russia. A few uh, presentations devoted to European situation. And uh, at the end, Vladimir Sidorovich will uh, try to combine these two stories in one. The first presentation is from Vladimir Patoshnikov, senior researcher of central economic modeling uh, of RANEPA, the scenarios for the development of the power generation sector in Russia. That's the title of his presentation. Good morning, colleagues. My uh, report is more of a theoretical um, type about the uh, development of the power sector in Russia. This is top bottoms approach. How much renewable energy are we going to use, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and what to expect from the sector in Russia? That, based on the Rotterdam uh, partial uh, uh, equilibrium model, we started from conception and uh, um, fuel um, uh, f uh, uh, from 12 to 15. And there's a model of uh, um, ultimate uh, equilibrium, uh, trying to find equilibrium between consumption and uh, supply. We, we took uh, the data starting from 2008. And in a harsh scenario, we try to address this with this op optimistic prospects for the development of the economy. How much demand, how much growth in demand are we going to have? And how much emission are, are we going to generate? Uh, we underestimate uh, here 
because we are not using the technology of using the energy and we have, don't have um, calculation based on months. We have calculation based on hours, but not on months. That affects more the consumption of natural gas and the price of natural gas. Several scenarios. First, uh, the business as usual scenario, when the business continues like it is with any additional inputs, changes, no climate policy, no other policy measures. With these optimistic drivers, the uh, um, consumption will not change in the consumption of energy. But, well, the use of the final use of energy would increase because of increased of efficiency of thermal and uh, electrical generation. Uh, start using uh, renewables more, and the use of coal and uh, fuel oil would reduce in power generation. Then a milder scenario comparable with the two degrees Celsius to prevent the increase of global temperature by more than two degrees Celsius, according to the Paris Agreement, with a limitation of 45 uh, gigatons of CO2 from uh, organic fuels until 2050. The article uh, on the results is, is under review now and there and there. In this milder scenario, uh, starting using wind and the solar energy more actively to reduce the amount of emissions. Also, we will have to uh, c not only improve the efficiency of uh, generation, uh, but also improving the efficiency of use of energy. Uh, that would reduce uh, the consumption of electricity and heat. In this scenario, the proportion of a solar and wind would not be more than 18 to 19 percent. That this is lower than the current proportion in the European Union, and this is against uh, compared against 1990. The Kyoto Protocol no longer active, but the starting point for the calculation of all of those scenarios. This generation of power. And depend on scenario, uh, business as usual, reducing 50 and 70 percent against 1990. All scenarios cold, according to this model of partial equilibrium, uh, will be replaced the most, also replaced in most radical scenarios. Gas would be replaced by renewable sources of energy, and the proportion of wind and solar would increase, considering those additional opportunities that would be created, and considering that solar and wind, the technologies are becoming cheaper with every year, the use of solar and wind energy is going to increase, of course. The main con difference between business as usual and uh, voluntary obligations, these two scenarios, well, so, so are this, and the use of renewables is minimal in business and usual, but uh, using well, in, in certain seasons that improve the economic uh, uh, situations. See. But the proportion would continue to be lower than the current European Union. Uh, the hydro is not included in renewable. What does not depend on the climatic policy measures is that, um, uh, well, that uh, irrespective of that, the production of coal is going to go down. Thank you. Thank you, Vladimir. Second presentation. Uh, Dmitry Vakhrukov, head of the Department of Tariff Regulation and Infrastructure Reform of the Ministry of Economic Re Development of the Russian Federation. The main drivers affecting the transformation of the uh, electricity market in Russia. Thank you. Uh, good morning, colleagues. I'll try to also be brief in my presentation. In the opinion of our ministry, all tendencies are actually are in Russia and, and depend on three basic factors, two of which we can call the traditional drivers and one new driver. The first factor is climatic uh, considerations and the strategy of the future power generation 
well, like in the past, would depend on the production of heat. And hardly in the near future we're going to go away from that. Heat will have to be produced, and that's the overwhelming factor depending um, I'm, I'm making an impact on the future of the power generation that's production of heat the proportion of traditional power generation in the horizon of the 15 to 20 years are not going to is not going to change this is number one and the basic and fundamental thing that should be taken into account in all forecasts that's first second factor cross-subsidizing in um, power generation, cross-subsidies and measures taken to reduce cross-subsidization and uh, retaining the customers in the energy system that is um, a plan for uh, paying for capacity. This is something, another factor that is going to make a, a negative impact on the development of distributed um, power generation. Now the government will have to take measures to uh, to do something about cross subsidization there's a, a set of measures developed by a ministry to reduce the dependency on cross subsidization i will not go into detail about that in the coming to two to three weeks that's going to be proposed in a bill we will um, make that proposal to the government by 2030 we see a, a prospect up to 50 billion rubles re reduction in cross subsidization in our view right now the business pays for the um, households uh, 1.5 million rubles this is network part and uh, wholesale market part business subsidizes household and that's a very important factor uh, that driver uh, affecting the growth of power engineering. And number three, something we did not talk about much in the past, this is the price of uh, electricity for households. We used to talk about reliability a lot, new uh, facilities a lot, but now we're starting discussing that the growth in electricity tariffs should be limited by the size of inflation. This is a factor that's going to affect the future. Uh, the appetites of the generators while of renewable energy are going to grow, affecting the investment appetite in the gen power generation industry in general. And this is new, and this is something that should be incorporated into the development plans in um, modernization effort. And this, uh, in terms of uh, length of modernization, uh, um, uh, length of investment, etc., etc. And these three factors would uh, make a 90% influence on the future of the power generation market. Now, the demand and the consumption of electricity, we do not see much growth there in terms of consumption. Like experts from Aranepa, we don't expect that to grow much. On the one hand, the demand of the economy would be compensated by improving efficiency energy of energy use and uh, that we expect in the coming five years that bigger companies would move uh, to more efficient uh, energy consuming equipment uh, so we don't expect much growth in demand 2017 could be called a threshold year, the last year where uh, demand increased, and that was an increase of 1.5%. We don't expect any more growth in the future. Of course, regulatory initiatives that are going to be made by the government in the future would affect the prospects that is paying for capacity, for reserved capacity. The structure is still, still being discussed. Uh, oh. Uh, the digitalization of networks, that's another project. We'll start with pilot projects, of course, there before we move on to completely digital in the distribution networks. This is something which would 
uh, help us uh, shave off uh, the consumption peaks and reduce the amount of capacity uh, which is not utilized, which would improve prices. And there will be other regulatory initiatives. I believe that in general, the program of modernization in general, a uh, way it has been agreed upon, we're not there yet, but we are very clo close to the final framework that is going to be enacted. The first projects for the modernization of uh, thermal power generation would start this year. And competitive uh, um, uh, procurement of capacity. Well, this, these are details of what, uh, well, what we have in that modernization program, but it does not imply that there's going to be a technological breakthrough in the coming years. But, and again, the tendency is to, well, the, the main factor there is to provide heat rather than electricity. Hardly any technological breakthroughs there. Now, renew, renewable program. We have a tendency there in renewable sources of energy like this. The wind generation over the horizon of 10 years would uh, come to price parity with just gas generation. Solar generation will not reach until that until 2035, the price parity with gas-based uh, generation. What does it mean? Us. Without the support, external support, solar generation will not take off in this country. And I mentioned a third uh, tendency, uh, uh, limitation of price. In our view, the, a new mechanism to support renewable energy would be establishing certain uh, obligatory volumes that have to be uh, um, uh, bought from renewable sources, but that would be based on actual consumption, not capacity. This is a tendency that we see evolving in the coming 10 to 15 years. Thank you. Thank you, Dmitry. Well, uh, let's defer the questions until after the presentations. I hope we have time for Q&A. Next speaker is from Yuri Melnikov, senior analyst. Electrical power generation in Moscow, Skolko School of Management, modernization of traditional power engineering. Uh, good morning, colleagues. I'll tell you about our vision of the modernization program that been discussed over the past year quite actively. So in this particular building, there were a lot of discussions. Well, I mean, the building you can see on the slide in Skolko Business School. And also, I'll tell you something about comparisons. What do we uh, think in terms of modernization in our country? And we compare that against what happened elsewhere in the world. Well, I actually you would prefer to use the term renewing energy rather than modernizing the energy sector. The global context for the development of power generation, we are based on the analysis of these uh, uh, three uh, cogs, um, digitalization, digitalization, and digitalization. The, what it essentially means, um, power generation comes closer to the consumer uh, Defragments generation becomes closer to the consumer. The number of generation facilities increasing by dozens, hundreds of times, but they become smaller. And there's also climate change. Uh, in countries uh, seek to increase uh, renewable sources of energy. This is the carbonization and number three digitalization to manage efficiently the power generation system you can see the numbers some in the text the investment in new generation in, in this uh, in the world is more than into traditional power generation facilities 2021 gen distributed generation would be more than major power generation facilities Elect E-mobiles, um, uh, um, energy accumulators, 
uh, new technologies. It is, as a result, there is less demand for huge uh, um, uh, steam turbines and gas turbines. Siemens General Electric uh, reduced the number of jobs by a thousand uh, throughout the world because fewer, less, lesser capacity is required. Evolution is there. Smaller capacity, more in numbers. And the Ministry of Energy was also thinking in the same th way. And our challenge here is to find a reasonable balance between the traditional energy based on organic fuel and new energy to, well, to uh, capture the opportunities that may open up. This is about new energy. Now about traditional uh, heat generating thermal plant that we want to modernize or renew. Well, let's see what's happening there in this sector. Well, gas um, power plants, most important one for us. Three pictures here, left on top, United States, right hand side, Germany, below Russia. This is the structure of gas generation. Uh, uh, blue is uh, steam gas units. Uh, orange is uh, um, steam power units. In all three countries, you see a tendency for the increase in steam uh, gas uh, units of the 10, 15 past years. In Russia, well, well the whole program uh, for gas generation was uh, focused on um, steam gas generation and the increase in generation that we have over the past 10 years is done by these steam gas units. Thanks to this uh, program, we have about 10 percent of steam gas units, maybe 15 percent maximum. All of this is still far behind 10 times less than the United States, five times less than in Germany, and three to four times less than Saudi Arabia. Even the countries which have very uh, inexpensive gas, they still using these uh, more sophisticated units. This is the status with gas generation right now. And well, some of the results are shown here. Even those power plants where one third of the capacity was replaced, uh, uh, steam power units replaced by steam gas units, the unit consumption of fuel uh, re uh, reduced by a quarter or one third even. And uh, new power plants would consume half as much fuel as the traditional ones. The uh, productivity of labor in steam gas units also much more efficient. You can see the picture. Fewer people are, are required to operate those plants. This is real automation, real digitalization in these new facilities. Now, coal generation, the proportion is not very high in this country, but still quite tangible and should be modernized, of course. The status here is worse. The uh, modernization program did not cover uh, uh, coal-based plants much. And the global tendency is that there are uh, uh, clean coal technology used in other countries, not in Russia as yet. Back in the Soviet days, we tried some of that technology back in the 70s, but never adapted commercially. And it's not being used in Russia, the clean coal uh, gen uh, generation. It's zero in this country right now. As against the backdrop of 10 percent average throughout the world, we're far behind, of course. Uh, the ultra clean stations, 300 gigawatts throughout the world. The capacity is many times more than all of our coal burning power plants in general. And the heat and power generation plants that I'm more proud of their cogeneration facilities. These uh, power plants, they're very old, more than 40 years old. On average, one third of that capacity was built back in the 1950s using the technologies dating back from the Second World War. So this is the status right now. Well, age is one thing. But also emissions, a big problem for coal burning plants in Russia. On average, our average power plant is at the level of the worst Chinese power plants in terms of emissions. Our, 
it's 10 times of more emissions that our uh, power plants producing than the average Chinese and hundreds time, times more than Japanese coal burning power plants. And they all well, there in Japan, they're right in the centers of cities. They're so clean. So we're very much behind in terms of technology, both gas power plants and coal power plants. Now, if, uh, well, this uh, second modernization program to analyze the situation for it, we have to take into account four parameters that would uh, make an impact on the decision makers. First, inexpensive fuel and uh, expensive capital, which requires uh, different um, models. We haven't got gas turbines as yet and clean coal technology. We don't have that. We're dependent on external suppliers on that. The energy market module does not support the business of, as usual model to uh, um, uh, uh, renew something. We need a special program, government support, support sponsored program. And number four, the price of electricity right now for all of us, for people at large, for politicians, for the business, uh, um, a lot more important than uh, the environment, uh, energy efficiency, climate change. And this is something that makes an impact on all other aspects. Based on these four criteria, while well, we have, well, considering them, we have the program as we see DPM, the modernization program number two. Well, this is under consideration still, close to being finalized. Maybe signed soon. Well, briefly, in a nutshell, what is it all about? The modernization program number done. It, um, well, this document uh, attempting to stimulate a power generating company to replace capacity, older technology with new capacity. Maybe not necessarily new technology, but uh, new uh, new items of equipment from traditional uh, uh, technology. Improving the efficiency, environmental impacts are not included in the project program as an addition, a separate factor. Only um, get, get into the picture if the operating company considers them important. But based on the energy market model and considering the technical limitations that we have in that document that is under consideration, the generating company will not be stimulated to address uh, efficiency, modernization issue, te technological modernization issues. Most likely, well, the cheaper capital expenditures, the better. So uh, hardly any new technology. To sum it up, this program would uh, help extend the uh, life of the po existing power plants. That's a fact of life. It would help to uh, give jobs uh, to uh, uh, steam manufacturing facilities in Russia. Maybe we will be able to devise our own uh, gas steam turbine in Russia. Hardly difficult to achieve in uh, current situation. But other KPIs on efficiency, on the environment, on uh, using alternative solutions like in distributed power generation, uh, power, power, power uh, distribution, they're outside the framework of that program. Maybe would be the rest in further documents somewhere into the future, but not right now. To sum it up, yes, it's an element of the current energy policy. This is the situation where we're in. That's why we have the program as it is, a logical consequence of that. At the same time, we have to be aware that this document uh, builds a foundation for the energy of the future in Russia, like in the 1950s, 60s, or 2050, 2060s, they would be uh, diff uh, like they are right now. And our uh, children or our grandchildren will th uh, think again of how to modernize and obtain that capacity. So that's going to be traditional technology. And that would continue to increase the gap, in t in technological gap between Russia and other countries. And the final thing I wanted to share here, we had discussed that a long time ago, uh, there was an article that we wrote in Erbeka, 
media com company. Well, and uh, we would criti we work with, criticize that. We in Skolko are, are uh, uh, detached from life. Uh, talking about new technology, and before the end of the year, the head of two generating companies, very big ones, expressed themselves quite clearly that no gas turbines or gas for gas generation are going to be available in this country. So the first launch is not planned in the visible future. This is the first outcome what we got to, but probably as a it's it's not considered as a serious negative or adverse scenario. Thank you very much. Yuri, thank you very much. Speaks without mic, if he's, he's speaking. Yes, just not yet. Uh, frankly speaking, I, that wasn't my intention to focus on the video. I would like to better touch upon the second part of this discussion, I mean the change of the status quo. What is more important for me is I can agree with the major conclusions that have been drawn so far. Uh, in my view, the first issue that we are facing now, so the horizon for f near five to ten years and uh, long-term modernization. If we are talking about this uh, long-term modernization, uh, and it was mentioned in the previous report that we are talking about long-term and uh, medium-term uh, modernization. But let's come back to the current uh, trends. So this trends shows that out of all possible options to maintain the necessary capacity in a huge power grid, we can draw a simple conclusion. Modernization uh, of uh, power equipment uh, turns out to be a very optimal solution. This is what we came to, and uh, no one uh, challenged this. But in terms of uh, longer periods, that could raise uh, many issues in the future. And it is very important uh, to maintain the uh, current uh, gas pricing policy at that, the current stage, because uh, some years ago we used to discuss these uh, changes. No one remember about this uh, just right now. So modernization uh, has justified its own uh, objectives, uh, renewables. As it was mentioned, in the near future, renewables without any governmental support will never survive. And we are now just discussing how to ensure proper governmental or state support for the renewables in order to ensure competitiveness of this uh, uh, renewables in order to ensure one tariff approach in order to promote it uh, from a point of view of generation and production of uh, specific uh, equipment. So technological competition comes hand in hand with in this uh, processes and the effectiveness uh, is also justified by the price of the equipment. So we need to take into account the, the uh, power grid uh, parity when the costs of uh, renewable equipment is equal to the output from this uh, power grid. According to our est estimates, taking into account uh, the recent trends and uh, those costs that are available in Russia for uh, renewables, we have a quite optimistic outlook for 2030 regarding solar energy. We are sure to get some parity. 
some investors claimed uh, even shorter period of time, but we believe that uh, 2030 is a moderate outlook. And in wind energy, we can expect it uh, quicker in 2025. So these programs should take into account uh, these dates, and after that, they should reassess because priorities change, will change the situation. See the so some probably changes uh, in uh, state support should uh, be made. So that could create a specific or separate uh, discussion regarding renewables, future of renewables. Renewables is uh, one of the element of the state support, uh, and the state is dealing uh, and going deep and deep into renewables. So we need to ensure the efficiency of the mechanisms that are created uh, to support renewables. So uh, grid infrastructure is another matter. We need to take into account the modernization of the power grids uh, in terms of metering uh, and so on and so forth. But all these elements should be interlinked. We need to understand better what kind of a market we should expect and what kind of a power grid should service this market. Would it be the same power grid or would it be different? And that would provoke a very serious discussion. So far, it's just starting. So. Some claim that we need to start spending money to modernize or upgrade uh, power grids to bring it to the future demands. And another topic which wasn't mentioned here so far is a retail market and competition in retail markets. This is a relevant task, and it remains so. And uh, recently, we haven't made any progress in this. And we always stress that without uh, serious competition in retail markets uh, and efficiency of these markets, uh, we can hardly attain those objectives that we set. So if we change these aspects during the next 15, 20 years, that would be an interesting picture. I have already mentioned a, a picture of components and costs. The upper part of is uh, the modernization of the power generators. And there are some other elements. Without going into the detail, we see a common trend. This is uh, focused for the future expected uh, inflation rates. So modernization uh, is made for the consumption of uh, annual consumption of 0.5 percent. But even in these circumstances, we see that we have some room for inflation and the this uh, constant element of power grid. In terms of growth, it goes a little bit faster as the energy part, which is in light blue color. This is a visible trend which is taking shape now. Now, the main problem that we need to address now is that we are trying to build a system with the view of uh, next 15 to 20 years. Some claim that the horizon should be 50 years. But we are discussing this. Uh, scheme on the basis of uh, old prerequisites, all uh, systems. So simple structure, a big uh, digital generation. This is the only source of the energy supply of all consumers in the country. Then consumer uh, consumers are not influence uh, this uh, system. They are just getting energy, paying for this. And the question is, at what price they would get this uh, energy? And it would be limited by inflation rate. And the question of uh, volumes, uh, at what uh, pace, at what uh, rate it would be 
growing, and fuel balance would hardly be changed. Uh, Paris agreements in terms of uh, exhausts and so on and so forth. I don't believe uh, we should uh, have a bigger time span. Probably we need to discuss this uh, within 10 or 2, 15 years. Yesterday, the uh, Prime Minister said that we shouldn't build our future on the basis of the old prerequisites. Ah, by the way, uh, demand is uh, considered, as I said, not as an elastic one, uh, unchangeable, which uh, doesn't change uh, structure with uh, well-known or uh, predicted rates of growth. And this demand is not supported by any uh, responsibility in terms of uh, forecast of, uh, regarding this demand. This is a strange, strange prerequisite. The sensitivity of this picture, if we uh, trying to keep uh, the structure as it is shown on the slide, then we can predict a very high uh, rates of demand and consumption. So next slide, please. Not previous. Just come back. Yes. Just a simple exercise. We state that demand is uh, cost-driven. So there are uh, discussion regarding the additional uh, generations regarding those uh, prices that they get from this grid. So we put all the elements, uh, decision-making, quite conservative uh, scenarios. And uh, we put this in terms of uh, 10 to 15 years, and the minimum threshold, the minimum uh, threshold and uh, minimum uh, risk uh, threshold exceeding 14 percent, even this minimum scenario just on, on taking only industrial consumption. 0.5% would be consumed by the industry. So there won't be any growth at all. So con consumers reacting or responding to the price changes would do this, as I said. Another conservative scenario, just a half of consumption within a longer period of decision making regarding the high voltage lines or distribution lines, I mean bigger consumers. Instead of growth of 0.5, we will get decrease of 0.3 percent. And on the basis of this scenario, it means that if we use these scenarios, not only the uh, modernization of uh, PPS, uh, we would like to compensate these uh, costs uh, uh, from the consumers. Then we will face a dilemma. Who will uh, take the bigger blame for the distortion of this uh, system, investors or consumers? So it's very hard to predict uh, the efficiency of these scenarios. I'm not saying about even uh, macro. Uh, indicators. So this simple exercise within this horizon or timeline, it's very difficult to make such big uh, decisions. If we look in a wider term, so this uh, traditional chain, food uh, chain, so practically at all stages, we already see the appearance and testing and introduction of technological alternatives, starting from fuels like renewables in Russia. This is torf. But as a primary source of energy, this is a huge resource now, uh, waste remains the big challenge, like uh, um, peat and 
uh, power generation from waste, which could be quite efficient, like energy from a pit. This fuel could provide some competition in the Russian market vis-a-vis -vis other types of fuels. At the level of generation, it's quite clear that uh, pistol uh, uh, generators are uh, quite competitive, uh, like in Prospect, uh, they could be very efficient and quite cheap technology, which is used widely, demand response aggregators. This is a serious alternative to maneuvering generation at the level of uh, production and management of different regime on the power grids or networks. If we look at the gas grids, these are serious grids to, in terms of uh, being alternative. And another emerging uh, story, hydrogen as a delivery mean. So we are closer to getting commercially viable solutions like in Japan using hydrogen uh, to deliver uh, energy to consumers. IT technologies, blockchain could principally change the picture in uh, this uh, segment. And the consumers, which we are saying that this is a sacred cow, also feel some competitions in terms of uh, patterns of consumptions. So he will oblige to choose between these uh, patterns of uh, consumption, either direct experts or indirect experts, uh, or use of uh, hydrogen in terms of delivery means of the power. So that could create uh, various alternatives, like in gas uh, supplies uh, um, and probably other fuels, types of fuels. So the brief example, I won't go into the detail. We compare the efficiency of uh, by gas and electricity uh, grids, uh, the level of distribution networks, the same uh, power, and the costs uh, in terms of delivery. You see the scale. scale at the level of distribution networks, uh, the difference is by 10 times. And distribution is 10 times um, uh, as efficient by uh, gas uh, networks. And the gas infrastructure in our country is quite solid and well developed. And maybe just for the future or the, uh, for the homework, change of the economic uh, patterns, we should uh, talk not only about uh, renewables or other generation. We should look at the electricity market in a wider terms because we see the emergence of uh, energy savings uh, programs, which is a serious alternative to a new generation patterns. And new, many new alternatives at the level end user, and I believe within next 10 years they would be commercialized in the markets. And the supplies from EU would be one of the of the many other options which would be governed by regulator. All other stories or options are quite viable and competitive, and we need to predict them. And the one who could manage uh, additional niches uh, in this uh, market or provide some additional solutions that would, that would be very interesting for the consumers and participants in the market, provide infrastructure for these options, infrastructure in the modern world. Uh, is uh, very costly, but provides a lot of profits. So the one who will guess, uh, will have a right guess in terms of the future developments in this market or the strategies uh, would win. So this is a sort of op an open uh, question, and, and uh, it is, it has uh, 
10 to 15 years time span. Thank you, Alec. Next speaker would be Tatiana Lanchina, senior scientist of the RANHIX or RANEPA Lanchina. Since in Russia, renewables is traditionally a desert. I will talk about this uh, later in my presentation. What we managed to achieve in this area? Over five years, we have uh, created the renewable industry in Russia. Till 2014, we saw the construction of small power uh, plants using uh, uh, absolute equipment. But starting from 2014, we introduced the first solar uh, plant and we constructed more than 30 power solar power plants uh, by 2018. We also introduced the huge wall, uh, wind uh, uh, plant and introduced the uh, second part of this uh, plant with uh, 85 megawatts of uh, capacity. We also tried to export uh, solar panels for the first time, and it should be noted that we set up two enterprises in uh, solar uh, industry, and now we are working on construction on for enterprises for wind uh, equipment. So we reach quite a considerable uh, progress as compared with the previous years because we have been discussing a lot the renewables, but it never turned up uh, turned to serious solutions. If you look at this uh, slide regarding the future share of the renewables and installed capacity and generation as compared with the strategic documents that we have, we can see that the share would not be quite considerable. So far, plans uh, provides the strategy till 2024, and it's quite clear that we will be build more than 5.5 megawatts of capacity of the plants, and they would be put into commission quite soon, after 2025. So far, it's not clear. No decision is made. We have discussed it a lot last year, and decision is postponed till 2019. Regarding the general scheme of the construction of these um, facilities, scenario is 11.5 megawatts till uh, uh, 2030. Installed capacity is uh, around 5.5 megawatts. And using the data that we use in Russia, this is a conservative scenario. These are brand new plants, and so far they are not working into the full swing, into the full capacity. And probably we can expect uh, one to two percent of the installed uh, capacity of renewables in overall installed capacity. My colleagues will tell uh, us about. Uh, their vision in their countries of regarding renewables, but among visible countries, our task is quite moderate in terms of renewables. Regarding costs, in Russia, when each time we talk about electricity, we always focus on the costs of this uh, electricity or energy vis-a-vis uh, -vis other parameters. Here we see the main uh, parameters, and I compare the costs of the solar and wind energy in the world. So you see that the solar and wind energy is uh, quite costly as compared with other countries, but we see trends to reduce these uh, prices. We see the minimum uh, competition in the Russian market in renewables. Um, we provide bids, and we saw a lot of participants, which bring us to lower prices. And we see some examples when the Russian companies show 
low volt prices in other countries, like several months ago in Kazakhstan, Russian company Hevel won a bid for construction of wind plants on the prices comparable with the volt prices, five, six cents for kilo, uh, one kilo hour. In Russia, despite uh, that we have some basic elements of the markets of the renewables, we still lack uh, other components and elements for uh, creation of uh, full-fledged markets. Uh, we have a very good wholesale uh, re uh, market. Uh, in terms of retail market, the situation for some reasons is uh, uh, worse. In uh, isolated areas, we have some tools and projects, but as practice shows, the efficiency is quite low of those uh, plants that uh, were built. We have some uh, progress in retail markets, and finally, we expect that it would be possible to install solar panels on the roofs of residence houses and to connect them to the power grids. In terms of other elements that are already developed in other countries, corporate uh, demand, other demand, uh, in, in addition to micro-retail demand, so far in Russia, this is at the initial stage of development, and all these tools are needed because companies and people should choose for, for themselves what kind of energy they uh, would like to consume. And in conclusion, summing up, I would like to add regarding the picture of investments in the world. As you see on the slide on the left part, the IEA. In 2017, outlook uh, via adults uh, around two thirds of uh, the investments. This picture has been observed for several years when investments uh, outpace uh, into renewables, uh, outpace uh, the investment into the traditional fuels. Uh, Coal generation reduced up to the 11 percent, and Carmel Tracker assesses that in 2020 in Russia, the construction of new power grids would be cheaper as compared with the construction of coal power plants. Cost of wind and solar energy in the world at large starts from 2 to 3 cents, 2 to 3 rubles per hour. This is a lower price in Russia. It's quite clear this price, for some reasons, which were mentioned by Yuri Melnikov, which is connected to our traditional uh, pattern of energy, of our national energy, is uh, not uh, viable. But uh, the ro road could be more wise, uh, could be wiser as a traveler, and those tasks that we set now could be in the near future reviewed. Thank you, Tatiana. Now we have uh, three interventions regarding the uh, development of energy sector in uh, the uh, foreign countries. The first report, Valdor Lachti, coordinator of the energy strategy in uh, the European Union. Please put on your headphones. I will speak in English. Skip. I wanted to change some of the slides, but.
So very sorry, I will take the go again. <laughs> so if uh, one should look what are the global trends for the energy sector, then you should look where the money goes. And that picture shows the global power sector investments. And we see very clear trends. In 2017, 70 750 billion US dollars were invested. Investments are going down together with uncertainties of the whole global market. But very clear signal and trend is that the divestments from the coal, from the low carbon investments, the solar is up and wind and nuclear are down compared to the overall energy electricity investments has shifted towards renewables networks flexibility and of course cause of that changes are the changes in the cost of the technologies in in uh, us for example the the cheapest new built if you start construction today in 2022 when the plant would start operation the cost cheapest cost is the onshore wind plants and definitely the cost of technology will drive investment decisions that's the global picture which is largely the same Solar and onshore wind are equal to the gas and the coal. Nuclear and uh, gas speaking is, is much more costlier. Reasons for that definitely are the changes in the global uh, policies, the, the climate change, the agreement on the uh, of the, the reduction of the greenhouse gas emissions, the Paris Agreement. Definitely the Paris Agreement uh, commitments to go down well below 2% on the, on the greenhouse gas uh, concentration and the, the global warming is not delivered by the today's commitments, but you must know that the targets are renewed upwards every 50 years and majority of the countries are behind of the Paris Agreement and most of all we really see the clear trend that the policies are not staying and the goals are not staying on a paper but they are implemented and good example of that is the implementation of the uh, common climate energy policy goals of the European Union we had uh, 2020 20 goals, reduction of the 20% of the greenhouse gas emissions, 20% of renewable energy share increase, and 20% uh, of uh, energy efficiency increase compared 
to to last ten years, and we really see that those targets are on track today. New goals for 2030 are again much ambitious, and if we look for the newest, oops, newest decision of the Commission, a proposal from the 28th of November last year, a clean planet for all a European strategic long-term vision for the prosperous, modern, competitive and climate neutral economy, then the target by 2050 is really decarbonization of the power sector. 85 percent reduction of the greenhouse gas emissions from the power sector. And that's a big step ahead. And this is not the wish of the politicians. The, the business sector is very much following those decisions, and that's reality. We see the, the, the motivation behind of uh, shifting investment from the fossil based to, to renewables the cost of the carbon on the European uh, uh, emission trading market. Nowadays, the cost is around $25 per the ton of CO2 emissions of the European allowance units. And again, money from those auctions are allocated for the renewable of the for the renovation of the energy systems mostly, and for the energy efficiency. So the policies are really implemented. And private sector sees energy transition as business opportunity, not as the something painful. And uh, just a couple of examples. In Germany, 2018, fresh data that the first time ever the country's large coal consumption has been surpassed by the green energy production. In the UK, renewable energy produ production accounted 33% of the total energy production. That's the country's highest share in history. In Denmark, 2018, solar production constituted 2.8%, but the wind was up to the 41% annual production. 41% was generated from the wind. And the talks that wind does not blow or sun doesn't shine or the system will collapse, those are not just true because the power system does not collapse with high share of the renewable supply. Just some figures from the last year. In, in Denmark, in 24 hours, highest share of the solar energy in 20th May, eight, 0.5% was provided by the solar and 24 hours with the highest wind share, 22nd September, the wind share was 110%. The country produced more energy, electricity from the wind and exported it. And that's reality. The system didn't collapse. The system adjusts to the changes, to the new capacities. Definitely. There, there, there is needed investments into the flexibility, into the storaging, into the interconnections to keep the system running. But in interaction and in, in the connected markets, it is possible. Reality shows that. Thank you. Thank you, Valdor. Yelena, please. Thank you. Today, I'd like to talk about the uh, German energy uh, turn in Genda. And today, I represent the, the Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Germany. Uh, my main job is as a consultant of the 
consulting company, Dr. Langes and Dale Luzer, and their energy consultant based in Stuttgart. So what is the energy turn? This is a large scale transition from organic and nuclear power to uh, clean and energy efficient technologies often implied people employ when saying energy to an only energy sector, but not necessarily so. That also includes the transport sector, uh, the heat supply sector, of course, uh, the grids, consumers, and that, well, the fact that they accept those changes in the power generation sector. And in Germany, this is a very long-term process. The targets until 2050 right now. There are very many advantages associated with this energy turn in Germany. Reducing the import of energy resources and improving the reliability of power supply associated with that. Also, reduction of harmful emissions for Germany also important. The development of innovation in this area, which creates added value in regional and uh, local uh, areas, because often wise it happens on a local and regional scale. This is how the process is stimulated on a local uh, area. Um, uh, and also jobs are created, uh, renewables, energy efficiency sectors, the number of jobs is now more than the reduction of uh, number of jobs reduced in traditional sectors of power generation. Here we can see the evolution of GDP from 1990 and harmful emissions. In Germany, they were, uh, succeeded, succeeded in uh, uh, removing the connection between growth of GDP and growth of harmful emissions. Since 1990, uh, the emissions went down by 27 percent. What we see here is the objectives of any event until 2050. There are, uh, they are in several sectors. The main objective, though, is a, a climate objective that is reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Until 2020, they should go down by 40 percent, and uh, and 17, the reduction was 28 percent, almost. Most likely this objective is not going to be achieved in two years. Then uh, renewables in this sector, the objective is almost assured that it's going to be achieved like a consumption of energy already better than the minimal uh, goal of, for 2020 in heat supply. Also, 14 uh, percent renewables in heat supply also most likely to be achieved in transportation sector. More challenging to achieve the objectives. The gap is still quite high. In energy efficiency, the situation is much worse, like re the reduction of primary consumption of energy in 17 was only six and a half percent, and the gap was 13.5 percent until 2020. So we have to reduce the consumption very quickly if we want to achieve the objectives. Most likely that's not going to happen. Then the generation of energy, per, the generation per unit of consumed energy should grow at a rate of two to one percent per year, but currently it grew at 1.1 percent, not uh, sufficient to meet the objectives. Uh, another big problem is transport. The tendency to work differently there. It's growing the consumption of energy there. The consumption of energy in transport went up 
as against 25 by 4 percent. It should have gone down by 10 percent by 2020. This situation is similar with supporting mobility by 2020. The number of electric cars uh, should be one, more than 1 million by 2020. Now it's um, uh, 100,000 only. This slide uh, shows the objectives until 2020 again. And what is in circles and colors is probability of achieving those objectives. Green means that assured that it's going to be achieved or has been achieved. Yellow, not guaranteed that's going to be achieved. And red, most likely not going to happen. So in terms of energy efficiency, most likely we're not going to achieve the objectives. Now we see the main stages in this energy turn program and the increase of renewables since 1990. And before 1990, Germany had no renewables to speak about, only hydropower. And the main growth started in year 2000, uh, the first law on the renewables enacted and stimulating tariffs enacted with that law. 2010, a new concept was uh, implemented on, on the energy generation with uh, specific targets uh, for individual sectors by 2050. And later, there was a law uh, on uh, the renewables uh, was amended several times. The tariffs went down. And after the uh, latest change from 2016, that started a gradual movement from stimulating tariffs to market rates uh, with auctions introduced on individual technologies, uh, solar, uh, wind, and biomass. And also expected that, that while they would have lower costs in the future. And we, we can see that in less than 20 years, the development is very impressive. The renewable energy was much quicker than the construction of nuclear power plants uh, globally, I mean. What we see here is installed capacity of power generating facilities last year. The renewables, their capacity is already more than half of total installed capacity. The main portion of the renewable uh, power plants is wind and solar power plants. It's been said before already last year, for the first time, the generation of um, renewable-based power generation was higher than uh, power generation based on coal. Uh, coal went down by to, to the level of 1950, the lowest level of well in the history of statistics. In particular, well, because of higher prices of uh, emission certificates and lower demand for energy. Here we see a forecast for installed capacity until 2030. Renewables are supposed to be more than 70 percent of total installed capacity. Wind and solar would be leaders. Nuclear would be totally shut down by that uh, time period, and that's why they're not shown on that chart. This is an interesting one. The availability of energy when the by cost transport of our supply to GDP. It's 90, 90 until today. What we see is that the cost for electricity now uh, is at the level of 1990s. So in terms of cost, this is available but available because the economy is growing. And uh, distribution is an important part here. Uh, some groups of population or small businesses must be involved, must have access to this. 
inexpensive power. Next stages and priorities of the energy turn. First of all, it's uh, uh, since February, there would be a plan adopted of gradually moving away from coal, from coal industry, coal generation. Then an important part is digitalization of the grid and market infrastructure intellectual networks, intellectual consumption, a sector, power to gas technology, power to heat technology, cross energy connections, um, that's important for, to Germany. The development of electrical cards and infrastructure of charging station, uh, net network integration, and more interaction with neighboring countries, that is uh, building trans-border uh, connection. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. So uh, thanks a lot for the invitation. I will be uh, quite. Uh, I will try to be quick. Uh, my um, idea was to present you the, um, this uh, act, this uh, Green Growth Act. We uh, decide to push in France in uh, t uh, 2015. I think it can be a good example of uh, exchanging about the French experience uh, with uh, with Russia. Uh, but we are not in the same case as you will see. Uh, as you will, as you know, um, in France we don't have oil, we don't have gas, uh, so we have to to develop a new solution to uh, reduce our uh, energy consumption, and also to um, to uh, to increase our um, our green energy production. Um, so I will present you some of uh, this uh, action. We uh, we decided to uh, to put in uh, that law uh, free. Three, uh, three years ago. So th the main goals of uh, this uh, law was um, uh, in accordance with the uh, Paris Agreement. So some of the goals was to reduce 40% uh, less greenhouse gas emission in 2030 compared to uh, 1990. Um, also to reduce 50% um, less waste in uh, landfill by 2025. I know that uh, waste uh, is um, waste management is uh, also in Russia a very important uh, question issue. Uh, also, um, one of the goals is 30% uh, less fossil fuel consumption in 2030 compared to 2012. Um, in that uh, green uh, growth uh, green growth act, we also uh, uh, fix a carbon price. So right now, the target for one ton of carbon to be valued at uh, 56 euro in 2020 and uh, 100 euro in 2030. So it's quite uh, ambitious, and we will uh, we, we we hope to to succeed. Uh, some example of uh, action. So in the buildings, as you may know, building sector is. Uh, very uh, energy uh, consumption. For example, in uh, France, it's 44 percent, and it's also a very emitted uh, sector. So it's uh, 123 million tons of CO2 in, in, in France, only for that sector. Um, so we, we decided to speed up the energy renovation of housing in France. Is uh, almost 500,000 renovation of uh, of uh, house renovation per year in France, and also the idea is to improve the energy performance of uh, new buildings. Um, that uh, goes to uh, reduce uh, energy consumption in building. It's also uh, uh, good for the, for the economy because it uh, will uh, create, or it also creates some jobs, but the goal is to create uh, 75,000 jobs. Uh, so that's a different example of action uh, towards individuals or businesses. Uh, so, for example, for individuals, we create some aid for low-income households that they want to 
to make some uh, energy re renovation in them in their um, flat or in their house so uh, there is some subsidized from the states um, also we we put uh, we put in uh, in action uh, tax credits that means that uh, 30 percent of the um, of the cost of the works on your flats uh, can be uh, deduced, can be refunded on your um, on your uh, tax, on your annual tax. Also, we we create um, interest-free eco loan. Um, in another sector, is uh, transportation. Um, in France, uh, transportation sector is uh, the number one producer of greenhouse gas emission. I counting for 27 percent of French total emission. For that reason, we we decide to to fix some goals and to to, to take some actions uh, to reduce that emission and to reduce uh, energy consumption in the transportation. Uh, for example, uh, one of the main uh, target is to develop the electric uh, transportation, and for that. Uh, we, uh, we, we, we are targeting to develop uh, 7 million recharging points for electric vehicles by 2030. Um, also, we, we are pushing businesses uh, to uh, develop some mobility plans so for their employees to, um, to, uh, to share, uh, to have some uh, sharing uh, plans, sharing transporting uh, plan, uh, or to, to take more the public transportation. Uh, also, we we are pushing the businesses to um, when um, when they are uh, renewing their fleets uh, to buy 10% uh, of the new vehicles um, with uh, low emission vehicles. Another important uh, sector, uh, I think, it's uh, waste management. What do we call it in France, circular economy. Um, for that uh, sector, we are targeting to re recycle 55% 55, uh, 55 of waste by 2020 and 65% uh, by 2025. Uh, honestly, on this uh, sector, we are very, very bad in France compared, for example, to, to Germany. We are really in... Um, in, uh, in, uh, we are not, we are not very good, but yeah, we, 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 we take some new action and some new goals, and we hope to develop that. Also, we, um, we, we are targeting to recover 70% of construction on civil uh, engineering uh, waste by 2020. Um, so that's also some kind of action. One of I think interesting action it's concerning the plastic bags. So we decide uh, to ban the distribution of these plastic bags in the in the shops, for example. Uh, it's working quite good. People are coming with their own um, own bags, and so it's uh, less uh, plastic production. Uh, so one of the main topic uh, no, today I think was uh, interesting um, compared to the. Um, to the presentation before me, it's about uh, renewable energies. Uh, for that, uh, we, we decided in France to uh, double the share of uh, renewables in the French energy system over the next uh, 15 years. And until now, we are doing quite, uh, quite good, and we hope to, uh, to be at 30, 32% in uh, 2030. Uh, so for that, uh, mostly it's a question of uh, facilita facilitating investments. Uh, and so we, the law, um, make it possible individuals to invest, to, um, to buy some uh, share holdings in some uh, limited companies involved in, uh, involved in uh, local renewable energies. That's also true for the local authorities. So local authorities now can invest directly and take, uh, can take uh, shares in uh, companies uh, developing uh, local um, renewable uh, generations. Um, and so I won't speak about that. Maybe it's important. So the last point, maybe it's what can be told. It's uh, what can be said. It's about the finance because it's al al always a big issue. I suppose it's also a big issue in in Russia. Uh, all, to develop all these uh, goals and all this uh, new action, all this new technology, we we need some finance. So uh, there we have some example to um, 
to make uh, to make possible. As I told you before, we 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 decide to. Um, to create this uh, tax credit, so when you are doing some um, some um, efficiency energy works in your uh, flats, you can uh, deduce it from your tax each year. Also, we have uh, developed this interest-free eco loan. Uh, we have this what we call Caisse de dépôt. It's uh, like um, our fund, our national fund. Who uh, put on the table five uh, billions of euro uh, to help uh, and to develop some public uh, projects, for example, energy renovation uh, and positive ener energy buildings in the in the local uh, local region to develop clean transport. Um, also, we are uh, facilitating uh, for the businesses to to create long-term funding. Uh, long term funding is interesting because it uh, allows you to uh, develop more uh, green bonds. And uh, that can be one of the ways to, to finance all these projects, is to develop more the green bonds. And for, it, for that, you have to, 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 to make it possible uh, long term funding. Uh, so, that's quite uh, finished. Thanks a lot. Spasiba Zavnimani. And if you have some questions, I will be very pleased to respond. Good afternoon, everybody. Let me show you some pictures as well. Probably three years ago, I talked about practically the same topic, something greenish. Greenish economy, green economy, the main trends in the energy sector. But over the last three years, the strength has uh, have a a strength, and we see France, which historically built on uh, the nuclear power. If uh, solar and wind energy types uh, were regarded as uh, the fast growing, now we see that these are today these are the main uh, energy sources globally, not uh, by the sizes of investment, but also by the installed capacities introduced annually. And we now we see that they overcome uh, a thousand gigawatts. We, we see now the parity between renewables. Today's situation even uh, better. In some markets, uh, new uh, renewables are even uh, cheaper in, as compared with the traditional uh, sources of energy. And uh, new uh, renewables uh, uh, sources are also becoming uh, cheaper as compared with the coal and gas uh, um, Industries. So we see clear trends. So the share of uh, new uh, technologies is uh, growing. It's uh, very difficult to predict how fast. We see trends, we understand trends, but in terms of rate, uh, rates uh, or speeds of growing, it's uh, very difficult to predict. DHL, Norwegian company, is a consultancy company. They believe by 2050, 70 percent of electricity will be generated by wind and solar, uh, and the consumption would increase, would double. So the energy pattern would be different, and energy system would be different as they are now. So these processes are developing independently on our wheels. And some people are saying that energy is inevitable. So it, it is developing beyond our will. So let's imagine that 10 or 100 years ago we discussed uh, this topic, people are living without electricity. Why we should develop electricity? Because it would be very costly. Now we understand that this type of discussions are not making sense because electricity is uh, energy is changing. 
And in Russia, I believe so far we don't have a clear vision of these uh, changes. And if we do, but still we try to sh close our eyes. I always uh, show three slides in all my intervention. We see disparity between the size of uh, the economy, uh, renewables, and uh, the energy. We fourth uh, uh, country by generation. If we put uh, the renewables uh, as compared with the progress in other countries, we see that we are dragging somewhere below all these countries. And it is interesting to know that uh, let's take a look at the Saudi Arabia. They are trying to develop uh, their solar and wind energy to boost it. Uh, the same is true for Norway and Canada. They are building huge uh, wind plants. Three minutes, yes? Okay. And in our country, we also face uh, a task to increase the GDP growth and what could be done in terms of energy, having the same structure of economy and energy. It is impossible. That is why the development of new sectors, a sector of renewables, which is the most visible option uh, to explore. We see clear cut mechanism which uh, have been developed in uh, other countries. We also created our domestic industry in this sector. But to promote this industry, we need to reach other volumes. Uh, it's not a panacea for whole Russian economy, I mean renewables, but it could serve as one of the branches which could make its cont positive contribution into the economic growth. So we need to set tasks, otherwise we will degrade in terms of uh, technologies. And also I see that now we are discussing this in uh, the time scope till 2013, 5-10 uh, gigawatts. It's uh, rather a size of uh, Ethiopia. We would like to promote uh, to have bigger figures. We need to ensure competitiveness. Once we have competitiveness, we will get uh, lower prices. Uh, we have prerequisites for the lower prices. I believe for us the minimum is 50 gigawatts by 2035. And 50 gigawatts, I believe, we will be somewhere in the top 20. Uh, so this is what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vladimir. We are concluding our work. Unfortunately, we don't have time for questions and answers. Let's uh, thank our speakers and see you next time.